Hello students we are now back to another lecture on special relativity and in the last class we have proved that maxwell's equations are not invariant under the galilean transformation so that is this is the place where the problem starts and only good thing about the galilean transformation is that the newton's equations of motion they are invariant and not only that we can also show that the newton's law of gravitation the so called you know g into m n m2 divided by r square we can also show that that expression is also invariant so that is also quite simple to show in in conclusion we can say that the equations that are there in the newtonian mechanics they are safe with the galilean transformation the difficulty arises with the maxwell's equation that is what we have seen in the last class and now we are going to discuss what can what can be done further in order to address this issue uh, how to deal with a scenario that one set of equation is uh, invariant and the other one is not so how to deal with this situation and uh, is there any possibility to unify with some some kind of a transformation that's an idea and then coming to the title that i have written uh, the the so called covariance so covariance is terminology that you can use when you are when you are representing quantities in tensors okay rather than using the traditional arrow to say that they are vector quantities we will use the index notation once you use the index notation uh, you can always go beyond three dimensions and when such a, a higher dimensional mathematical entity remains invariant we say that it is covariant so covariance is a, is a generic term when we are going to use Uh, the tensor notation and index notation instead of uh, the the traditional arrow for the vectors so in principle or or in summary i can say that the covariance is something like synonym to the invariant property okay that that's all about it so the, that terminology i would like to say so coming to the uh, the point let us now discuss what are the possible ways in which one can proceed so let me first of all write down uh what is the difficulty and what is the trouble that you have with the galilean transformation so whatever i said let me uh, write it down the point is that maxwell's equations maxwell's equations are maxwell's equations are not invariant under the galilean transformation so this statement is fine that you have it from the last class okay now what to do so that the same question uh, we also asked in the last class and then stopped so let me write down how are you going to proceed so we can think about possible options uh, in what way you can proceed is we will have to think uh, what are the possible ways in which we can proceed so it is not that you have a straight forward way and then you can move ahead in that direction so i'll write down a possible option here so one of the possible ways to think is that uh, let me write down uh say first option so the idea is like this uh we can say that the galilean transformation is correct and then try to throw the blame on somebody okay the idea is like this that there is something wrong so you'll have to now throw the bl blame on someone uh so possible options are that uh, newton's laws of mechanics is uh correct but the maxwell's equation could be wrong okay so i'm not saying he's wrong so maybe Uh, so these are the possibilities right so it is a kind of uh, uh, finding the culprit or uh, on whom are you going to throw the blame uh, for the reason of the missing of the invariance okay you lost the invariance right so we want to find out uh, uh, what could be the reason so one of the reason is this that uh, galilean transformation is correct etc so what about the second option in what way you can think for the second option is that the galilean transformation is fine so that is the uh, second uh, plan that galilean transformation is applicable only for the newtonian mechanics so you can also uh, make a statement like this and then and then you can think about uh, managing the situation so let me write down that option properly galilean transformation is applicable only for newtonian mechanics if you say like that it is a way of escaping uh, uh, escaping from the electromagnetism 
only Newtonian mechanics it is applicable not applicable for Maxwell equation so that is another way uh, that you can try and then uh, try to manage the situation okay then what about another uh, alternative is there any other alternative is there uh, that is the third option I will try to write but let us but before that let us first uh, make some conclusion do you want to agree for this okay so will you agree for the option A so the answer is that no so, so though that thing let me write down then we can discuss further we can't agree for this kind of option A and we should also give the reason so I'll write the reason because the the Maxwell's equations are uh, well verified through experiments okay simply you can't throw the blame on the Maxwell equation the reason is Maxwell's equations are uh, already tested with experiments and uh, they are verified now you can't say that uh, they are wrong so that is the reason okay coming to the second option uh, the point is that again once again we can't agree okay this kind of statement you can't make Galilean transformation is applicable only for Newtonian mechanics means then why it is not applicable for uh, Maxwell equation so uh, the question is uh, the answering is not good so we can't agree for this uh, why we can't agree with similar statement let us write down that the principle of relativity so why we can't agree the principle of relativity should be applicable to all branches of physics or in general all laws okay uh, once you have a mathematical equation uh, then everything should be form invariant so the principle is, should be a generic principle and it should it must be applicable to all branches of physics so you can't say that only for Newtonian mechanics it is applicable so for that reason we will reject uh, this option B also so it's not a good idea so therefore uh, they are uh, you know we are, we are not agreeing so let me put in red color uh, some kind of highlighting uh, to say that we are rejecting the option A and uh, B both options are gone so next what is the possible uh, what is the other way out there so I will write down that as the third option uh, I will say that this is option C so what could be the possible uh, way that you can write is the following Newton's laws of motion are correct so this is the way in which you are going to argue NL means Newton's laws of motion they are correct not only that Maxwell's equations are also correct so that is the that is the way you are going to argue now so both of them are correct then what is wrong so we are going to say that we are going to throw the blame on the Galilean transformation so I will uh, so we will write like this something is wrong with the Galilean transformation so this time we are going to throw the blame on the Galilean transformation now uh, you'll have to think can we accept this kind of argument okay so most probably you you can accept in fact you don't have a reason for reject you see it is not that you are going to accept or reject so easily uh, if you don't want to agree then you have to you have to provide a valid reason so in this particular case what happens is you'll have to think you can't so easily say that you re reject this option it's okay so which means that Galilean transformation uh, is not applicable to one branch of physics means you'll have to think and then uh, why don't you discover a new transformation so that is how you think and therefore this kind of thought okay gave the uh, a fruitful result known as the Lorentz transformation LT okay so the, the idea is now clear that uh, uh, we are thinking uh, what can be done with this kind of a scenario and uh, the most probable way to deal with this to uh, ha uh, find a problem with the Galilean transformation and therefore uh, Lorentz transformation has been discovered so that is the history and therefore now what we will do is that once this is clear uh, what is the Einstein's physical input to the relativity because there is a question that we ask right what did Einstein do in this particular scenario so here is the uh, physical input I mean uh, uh, the physical insight into the Lorentz equation is uh, what is going to play a big role so that's what I am going to explain what is that so the observation is from the Maxwell's electromagnetic wave equation so first of all I will write down that Maxwell's electromagnetic wave equation and from that what can we observe so the equation is uh, simple del square e equal to 1 over c square into dou square e by dou t square okay that is for the electric field of course you can repeat it for magnetic field 
identical equation. So uh, it is the same or similar equation. Electric field has to be replaced by magnetic field. So I will be having del square B equal to 1 over C square uh, dou square B divided by dou T square. That's what I am trying to write. So this is your Maxwell's equation. This, that's fine. Now what is your observation? Like uh, using this equation, what are you able to see? So whatever we are writing is what, what is the observation by the Albert Einstein. So Einstein has observed uh, uh, this kind of a scenario and then, and then gave the idea what can be done. So what is observed is that electric field is a vector quantity, magnetic field is a vector quantity and the del operator that is there. So that is also, I know the space coordinates are there and then the time coordinate is there. You know already uh, something about the vector quantity, space derivatives, time derivative, etc. So that's what we are going to write down. All these things, uh, what, what do you know? What do you know is all these things will change. So let me write down that. All these things will change. How do you know that it will change? Means we have already done in the last two classes. You know that the vector is changing. Del operator sometimes changes. T can change. I mean time derivatives can change. So all these things are subject to change under the coordinate transformation. So these electric field, magnetic fields are there in the equation. But something is interesting as I am going to uh, circle in the green color. And that is the C square. Okay, so what I'm what I what is there in the green color is something that is uh, constant, namely the speed of light. So I'll write down, but c is a constant. Anyway, c square is there. That's okay. C square means c is the constant in place. So which means that uh, what do you mean by constant is that a constant will not transform. Okay, constant will not transform. Transforming means changing. It won't change its number. Uh, upon the coordinate transformation okay it won't change upon the coordinate transformation it is like having some constant value like temperature suppose my room temperature is 30 degree okay if i rotate the coordinate or if i if i if i move the coordinate with uniform speed okay temperature will not change that's an idea so it's a kind of a number constant number uh, which is not going to change but it is not only that, uh, uh, the C is not that simple, it is something much more than that. Experimentally, uh, like from Michelson Morley experiment and many other uh, supporting experiments and optics, okay. What is the conclusion from the experiment is that it is proved to be a constant irrespective of the speed of the source. So that point is very important, I will write down that. What is proved is that C will be a constant irrespective of the source velocity or the observer velocity. So the terminology source velocity is something important. So I'll put some highlighting here. Okay, irrespective of means independent of. So I'll put some highlighting so that those terminologies or terms you can give importance. Irrespective of means independent of. Independent of the source and independent of the observer. So there is some speciality in the speed of light that is appearing in the Maxwell equation. And Maxwell equation only gave you the trouble, right? It is not invariant. So, uh, so Einstein uh, is trying to catch that speed of light. So that is the point here. So Einstein is trying to catch the speed of light uh, to, to, you know, to nullify the problem. Nullify the problem means to, to, rectify the, uh, to, to rectify the loss of invariance. And then we want to bring back the invariance. So for that purpose, Einstein want to make use of, make use of the properties of uh, the speed of light. That is the conclusion. So uh, that is how the physically, physical thinking, how the how people thought over and then uh, what is the next step. That is the idea. So based on that, I will now write down the postulate of relativity. Okay, once the idea is clear, uh, we can now write down in a proper way of, uh, uh, proper sentence we can write down and that is why we say that it is a postulate. So what is a postulate is that the speed of light in vacuum is a constant. That is how Einstein has given the postulate. So you should not confuse the earlier one. The earlier one is known as principle of relativity. 
okay now i am writing postulate of relativity so what is the postulate is the speed of light in vacuum is a constant uh, not only it is a constant but also independent of the source of light so this is the second thing independent of the source of light not only that it is independent of the uh, independent of the observer so there are two independences are there independent of the source of light is one thing independent of the observer is the second thing independent of everything the speed of light will be a constant so that is something which is noted where from it is noted means from the maxwell equation that is very important okay not that you close your eye and suddenly you bring something from optics it's not like that so once this idea is clear now you have two things one is the principle of relativity then we have a plus uh, now we have a postulate of relativity principle of relativity means galilean principle from the first day we we started with the relativity that's a galilean principle that combination now is known as the einstein relativity so the idea is now clear that einstein has brought the concept of speed of light in discussing the theory of relativity and the idea itself came from the maxwell's equation that is a point to be noted and therefore the combination combination means the principle of relativity together with the postulate of relativity is going to uh, give you the einstein's relativity so that's all about it so the physical origin where from it came everything i explained it all came from the maxwell's equation and uh, this is the this is the physical input what i'm trying to write is lorentz transformation you have you know einstein has given the physical explanation how to understand those transformation equation that is what i mean to say at the end okay provided means what provided means einstein provided the physical insight to the lorentz transformation okay so let us now uh, let us now see some detail about the postulate of relativity so let me that is going to some other color i'll put it in white color okay so the the ultimate thing about the postulate of relativity is that the speed of light is a constant so that is quite uh, the statement is quite uh, familiar to you now we would like to extract a particular terminology instead of constant i want to say invariant so that is why i am rewriting i am once again writing now the speed of light is invariant because the terminology is uh, uh, should uh, match so invariant means something that doesn't change so speed of light is invariant under any coordinate system so that is the meaning so once the meaning is clear uh, we can therefore write down like this that means c equal to c prime so you understand what i am trying to write down one one expression with the prime one expression without prime so for the velocity of light what will you write c must be equal to c prime that is what we mean to say so and this immediately implies that uh, the moment you say that the uh, speed is uh, speed of light is constant then immediately it gives you the evidence that the time cannot be equal so that's why we'll say that t is not equal to t prime in fact this is something little uh, difficult to imagine or we say that the experience is uh, something contrary so it is contrary to the uh, daily life experience you know it's very difficult to experience two different time for two different set of people but however the ultimate truth is this this is the ultimate truth okay uh, when two things are there whichever one you are going to believe do you want to believe mathematics or do you want to believe uh, experience so the conclusion is that we are going to believe uh, the mathematics we are going to believe mathematics rather than uh, our experience okay that is a, that is your conclusion because once mathematics says this is so then we have to we have to agree upon and then proceed further because that's the power of mathematics okay you can't believe uh, so much about the daily experience or our, our life experience that is what i mean to say and because of that reason t is not equal to t prime is a very important consequence coming out from this okay so this is okay now let us see how to do the uh, calculation mathematically so that is what i am trying to write so whatever we have uh, we have explained now we would like to do uh, in terms of some equations so let me move to a different place in the board and then write down that okay it is the implementation of 
c equal to c prime how are you going to implement uh, in order to derive a transformation equation that is a point okay that is only one c is enough means what c equal to c prime so why do you want to c is one variable c prime is another variable both are equal right so let us have only one c that is what i mean to say so now the implementation is very similar to the galilean transformation i am going to draw the uh, set of coordinate axes very similar to the case of galilean transformation but the physical concept or the idea is different so you have to be careful to understand what is happening okay so the physical explanation is very important so you have to follow uh the explanation so that you can understand the equation coordinate drawing is quite simple as usual let me write down the x y and z axis and then there is an origin and then i i want to draw another coordinate system in green color and uh, the green color coordinate system is going to be moving coordinate system all these things are okay so so to that extent all the diagrams will look very similar so let me finish the diagram you put the x x x prime axis then that will be a y prime axis and then the z prime axis so you finish this labeling so okay configuration is fine now what what is that you are going to do is that you are going to start an experiment a simple experiment and when you are going to start the experiment what happens is the timer will be started by both the people so we say that t equal to 0 and not only that t prime is also equal to 0 because both the people are going to start their stop clock so their stop clock will show 0 when you are going to start the experiment and afterwards their time measurements will be different that is what it means to say so what is the experiment is very simple that we are going to flash a pulse of light okay it is just like uh, like like a fraction of a second one pulse of light will come and that pulse will disappear that's that that is an experiment that's all about so we are going to put a flash of light or a or a pulse of light uh, at the common origin common origin means uh, the the white color and the green color coordinate system will be uh, one on top of the other at time t equal to 0 so this point should be clear so i uh, so uh, you you will have to think a time t equal to 0 where will be the two coordinates the both of coordinates will be on one top of the other that is that is the meaning okay so one the, let me explain this uh, first of all then we will go to the next point so the the experiment is clear right you are going to uh, flash a pulse of light that means one pulse of light will come and then it will disappear i mean disappear means you are going to switch off the light then what happens is the light that is emitted from your bulb or whatever uh, light that you started that light will keep uh, keep propagating okay whether it is visible to you or not visible to you that is a different story but the point is clear right the moment you switch on the light that light pulse will propagate in all possible directions surrounding you in three dimension not circle okay in the three dimension it will be going outward and therefore it is going to occupy the spherical structure we say that it is a spherical wave front okay spherical wave front means what in all the directions the uh, light will be propagating with the equal distance so if you if you join all the points then you get a sphere okay so wherever you see whether it is left side or whether it is right side or front side uh, the light will be there uh, oh, that means light will be there on that uh, sphere we say that it is wave front so the concept of wave front should be clear to you isn't it so when a plane wave is there then the wave front will be a plane now this is not a plane wave this is a spherical wave okay when you have a spherical wave okay when you have a spherical wave the wave front will be a sphere so that is what i am trying to draw actually so let me uh, after this explanation uh, the the diagram i am going to show the yellow color sphere should be now clear to you so once this is clear uh, let me write down now that this is the sphere of radius r so where from sphere came that should be clear sphere represent the uh, wave front of the light pulse and c into t means uh, you already know that the speed is this c is the speed of light and uh, uh, you have allowed a time t okay coming to the green color one a similar scenario is there now the the observer in the green color frame of reference will see uh, his light pulse uh, of radius r prime 
so i am trying to draw some radius so it has to come as a straight line so that's what i'm trying once again okay looks uh, fine so let me put the arrow and then say that what could be the radius the radius will be equal to r prime which is equal to c into t prime and what would be the radius corresponding to the yellow color diagram you can again uh, draw that okay looks okay straight okay so you now write down that r is equal to ct so the meaning should be clear that you have the light pulse which is commonly emitting when when it is uh, uh, coinciding with the identical origin and then at that particular time the the green color coordinate system starts moving and then they measure the light pulse radius after their own time in the respective frames frame s and the frame s prime that's all so that is an experiment now the important point in this particular uh, in this particular experiment is that which is constant and which is variable that has to be identified so i will write down uh, in the frame s yes. frame s yes means stationary and the frame s yes prime that is a moving frame of reference so in these two variable in these two frames of reference what did you observe that the modulus of the r vector will be equal to c times t okay that is the radius of the sphere for the moving observer you have a modulus of r prime no no square is not there remove uh, modulus of r prime will be equal to c into t prime so we will have to understand this so i will write down some information so what do you understand here is that uh, this is the way in which the constant value of the c is going to be implemented okay this is how means this kind of ideology or this kind of methodology is what we are going to use in order to achieve c equal to c prime because just now uh, we have been asking how are you going to achieve c equal to c prime okay this is the technique if you are going to uh, follow this technique then the constant will be c for both the people that is what we mean to say so if you square this now we get c square t square here also you square r prime square will give you c square t prime square okay now what is this r and r prime you'll have to think carefully that since it is a sphere it is a radius of the sphere so automatically you can imagine spherical polar coordinate system so if you want to write down in the cartesian system this r square can be written down as x square plus y square plus is it square so that idea is clear and similarly for the case of the moving frame you can write down as x prime square plus y prime square plus z prime square so that is fine that is only left hand side right hand side right hand side same thing c square t square is there no that you have to write down so i'll write down that right hand side also x square plus y square plus z square equal to ct whole square same thing you repeat for the uh, moving frame of reference you will have to write down carefully that it is c into t prime whole square now what do you observe that this is the equation of the sphere so it's very clear because of uh, of course if the wave front is also sphere therefore the equation is also sphere so those things are clear so i'll write down that we have the spherical wave front for both the people of course both the people only thing is that the radius will be different that's all about it so what is our conclusion or what is our observation further observation our observation is the following so i'll write down uh, our observation in the third column maybe i'll go to the uh, some other place uh, so let me write down that what is not equal x is not equal to x prime similarly y cannot be okay suppose if you are also um, yeah, in this particular diagram uh, y may be equal to y prime but remember that the velocity transformation can be done on the y direction and z direction in which case all the three cannot be equal so in vector form you can write down in a compact way r vector is not equal to r prime and t is also not equal to t prime so then what is equal only c equal to c that is what i told that if you are going to explain if you are going to uh, apply this kind of an experimental scenario c equal to c prime can be achieved okay nothing else is invariant so now you understand what is invariant and what is not invariant so i want to write that so i want some space 
so we are now going to talk about what is variant and what is invariant so nothing is invariant okay nothing is invariant excepting for the constant c what is it constant is speed of light so you also keep a note that uh, c means uh, speed of light okay but what what we are interested in is that other than this constant uh, we would like to have some quantity that is invariant in both the coordinate system because if you don't have anything invariant then it is difficult to compare the result of the two people okay that is what we mean to say so uh, if all the numbers are different by the two different people then how do we compare and make a uh, make a comparison and then uh, study the properties so for that purpose what happens is we will have to search for some quantity uh, that is what we mean to say we will let us try to construct some kind of a quantity which is invariant in both the side so the idea comes from this equation we have an equation x square plus y square plus z square that c square t square i am bringing to the left hand side so that the right hand side is zero same thing you repeat for the for the primed coordinate system so instead of saying that it is equal to c square t prime square i am bringing it to the left side so that zero comes now you see why why we have written in this particular style is that you have zero so you give the uh, attention to the zero on the right hand side so what happens is that you have the zero for both the people that means zero will remain as zero in both the frames and such an object is known as invariant okay a constant will not change uh, in the reference frame so zero is a constant so therefore what happens is zero will remain invariant in both the frame so right hand side is zero okay fine what about left hand side so uh, we will write down that left hand side now so for clarity i'll write down zero equal to zero which is the right hand side then corresponding left hand side what will happen so corresponding left hand side will be this is the left hand side that you have the the so called uh, uh, x square etc so let us write down that so we can write down the corresponding left hand side is uh, if i close that difficult let us see let us keep that previous line also otherwise uh, it will be writing will be difficult otherwise i'll write first of all i'll write this and then show it to you c square t square minus x square okay how this is coming uh, i want to show this how this is written i want to show it from the beginning now you see that this equation is there right so in that zero is there so you simply write down as c square t square minus of this okay it is only an optional of uh, you know bringing c square t square first and then x square next but finally uh, this expression is zero that is what we mean to say so the exactly the left hand side of that equation is what is written down and this is for a particular value of t etc suppose if you have a differential value like small value for time small value for space etc then the corresponding expression will become c square uh, instead of t square we know you know write down it as dt square and that's all the remaining things are identical you understand this right so if x square is for a particular x then if you have an, a small value dx then that is dx whole square that is what we mean to say and let us call this particular quantity uh, why we are calling d square i'll explain it is something like the square of the distance okay uh, it is a traditional symbol so i'm using the d square there the meaning of d square is something like a distance between the two points distance between two point actually in uh, relativity we say two event event means point only nothing new there okay uh, mathematically it's a point and physically we say it is event that's all so basically we are talking about the distance between the two points so for clarity i'll write down like that and uh, and if the point is there it will be easy so now for example now they, if you write like this it will be very easy dt will be equal to t1 minus t2 and similarly dx means x1 minus x2 that is what i mean to say so small small uh, displacement a small time interval 
that is what i mean to say so once this kind of understanding is clear okay uh, then you can understand what is that we have written how this t1 minus t2 is coming you can imagine if i have two sets of point so now it is clear right so if you have two sets of point you can understand what is t1 minus t2 and x1 minus x2 and once that is clear now you can visualize how how we have written that expression on the left hand side so the dt dx is that dt dx dy etc that is this is how we have written and it is going to represent uh, the distance between the two points and we are going to give a technical name called a metric met metric means a kind of distance that's all there's nothing to worry about that metric means it is a way of measuring way of measuring that's all that's a metric uh, you measure somehow that's all somehow you measure uh, the measured quantity is called a metric okay that is the terminology that you are going to have so in in the case of the three dimensional euclidean space uh, uh, the term metric and all is not required you can simply say that it is a distance okay but we are now going to move from the three dimensional euclidean system to the uh, to the minkowski space so that is why all this terminology is coming so let me make this point clear now i'll make this point clear for that i have to compare no 3d euclidean and uh, the minkowski space so i will try to uh, write down both the cases then i will explain so i will divide it into two parts and on one side i want to write uh, the three dimensional euclidean metric it is basically it is basically distance only but uh, for introducing the new terminology we will use metric and in the right hand side i'll write one not 3 actually time is the one right so i have to write down 1 plus 3 so 1 plus 3 dimension what is 1 plus 3 dimension 4 dimension and uh, the name is minkowski space and why it is called 1 plus 3 1 means time 3 means x comma y comma z that's why it is 1 plus 3 now come to a very simple situation of d square equal to d d square plus dy square this is your simple pythagoras theorem that's all so it is that simple metric means that's all it if you have two 90 degrees and you can always measure the distance using the pythagoras theorem but what is getting complicated is in the minkowski space how do you write the metric is like this c square dt square minus dx square you note down the minus there that is what i want to show that there is a minus there and the plus there so now you see that there is a difference coming into picture and therefore we are giving the name metric instead of saying distance we don't want to call distance okay now you understand what it is because there's a minus there and in the case of the 3d plus is there one more example you write down for all the three dimension you get this expression so what do you mean by dx okay all these things are clear so you can you can now understand what we are actually writing uh, no no that is minus y1 minus y2 okay and whole square and similarly other things and d square means it is the square of the distance so that is also point to be noted it's a square of the distance the but in the case of the minkowski space how it looks like minus the x square minus dy square minus dz square this minus is the what this minus is very important and we have to note down we have to note down the presence of the three minus signs there okay so this is very important and where from the minus came just now we have seen we are we are talking about zero right zero uh, equal to zero just now i wrote down that equation only is this one so uh, you have to note down uh, that the minuses are coming into picture so what did you uh, what did you observe from this uh, discussion is that when you are moving from the uh, three dimensional euclidean space to the 1 plus 3 dimensional minkowski space okay the concept of the distance cannot be used in the traditional way we will have to find out a different style of writing down the measurement and that kind of measurement is known as a generic name metric this is the first point second point is just like pythagoras theorem uh, just like pythagoras theorem you can't have a plus everywhere pythagoras theorem will always give you plus there is a plus here there is a plus here okay that doesn't happen in the case of the minkowski space 
you always end up with a minus sign for the space component. What are the space component? X is a space component, minus is there. Y is a space component, minus is there. Z is a space component, minus is there. There is a time component here. For the time component, you have a positive. That means C square T square is a positive, whereas the remaining three takes the negative. That is why we have to observe the presence of the three minus signs here. In the case of the Euclidean space, all of them are plus. So once this is clear, we will uh, in the next class we will see uh, how to work out with uh, further mathematics to derive the transformation and understand the transformation properties. Okay, so uh, the continuation of this we will see in the next class.